Hello everyone, my name is Paul and Stamayoi, and we're back for Pokemon Y Shiny Hunting Episode 230, Lapras. If you didn't watch the last episode, why didn't you? And this episode's topic is by me. Um, it's just a personal thing, so I'm just gonna say it right away. So, um, if you didn't already know, it's kind of, I kind of put a, yeah, a pretty harsh way of it, but I just wanted to make sure that I knew what I was gonna talk about. So, pretty much, what I named it is... I am a bone cracking freak, and I know most uh, uh, most people would just like get pretty offended by someone like uh, insults themselves. But it's true. I did not mean to press B. Dang it. Um, but it's true. I crack my bones every single day, and um, I do it because if I if I don't, I feel like I'm all constricted and I can't move. And, uh, it just, like, really sucks when I don't because I really can't move all that well. And it's just how my life is. It sucks. And, um, yeah, so, if you ever, like, meet me in person or just see me, uh, just, like, me out in public and, well, if you didn't know who I was, then I wouldn't blame you because, like, my channel, like I said, is still pretty pretty small and not many I wouldn't expect really anyone uh, to, except for like the people I already know in real life to you know say something to me about like me being a youtuber and all that but um yeah so most of the time when I'm like out in public I'll be most mostly standing if I'm like waiting around for something and I would um if it even if just like five minutes passes if I feel any kind of weird feeling in my body um, that I just feel like cracking my bones will solve, then I'll do it. Like, I'll, I'll crack my knees and I'll, uh, like, crack my neck and my fingers and, uh, crack my back and all that, and mostly it's, it sounds, like, really disturbing. Like, not only, like, the fact that I that I do that so often, but just the sounds it makes, and, um, yeah, so, that's really all I'm gonna go for, uh, that's the, really the first I wanna go on this topic, cause I know, uh, you, you all are most likely already pretty disturbed, but, well, if you, if you've been this far on the channel, even if it's like your first episode you watched, then, gotta know sooner or later, whether it's just like, you think something's just uh, out of the ordinary of me, just not, that doesn't usually happen, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that it is very common for me, sadly, and it, like, has very hindered my, uh, life to have me do certain things, uh, well, actually, most things, but I'm, I'm getting by now, aren't I, so, I don't know, well, anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna leave the topic at that, so, anyway, um, I might as well talk about this before I get too far into the recordings uh, for this session. So I want to talk about more of the uh, Agent Ika anime. So once again, if you don't want to be spoiled about it, um, just make sure to mute the episode. I'll give you a chance right now. Alright, so I'm going to talk more about it because I was like, talking most of the time, you know, explaining what I explained in the last episode, but, um, it's a pretty awesome anime, uh, besides, like, of course, like I said, the, the minor sexual things, and, um, yeah, well, yeah, a, a tiny bit of minor sexual things, and then, um, m most of, like, showing, uh, when I say nudity, I mean, like, nipples, pretty much, that's, like, <laughs> the full extent of it in that anime, in just any of the animes I watch, because, um, yeah, if it was any farther, and it's, like, really just playing out them having sex, then, um, no, then I probably wouldn't have it on the list, or even watch it, or any of that stuff, so, yeah. Because I feel like if you just want to have that kind of stuff, just watch porn or something. Just straight up. <laughs> I'm just going to straight up say, just watch that instead of having that in your anime. Because just for me, there's like a line to cross. And uh, 
I just don't want to have that in my anime. They'll like save that when I actually want to see that and just leave the anime for like when I want to be uh, entertained. Just just watch it and stuff. So, yeah. So anyway, I'll talk more about it. Um, I would say um, more about the first episode because you um, discover what kind of person Aika is and she's like doing a... I think starting out with like a submarine. Yeah, yeah, she um, she's in a submarine and she's like, I guess yeah, she's a salvager. Yeah, that's her that's her job. But she's also like um, super martial artist uh, agent, which hence is the name, the anime agent Aika. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So pretty much, it is really awesome because if you like the sea, then um, of course, they're not all uh, always on the sea, like if you see the anime, of course. But anyway, so yeah, pretty cool because there's a lot of interesting characters. And um, another spoiler for uh, another anime that is like that. This is like a sequel because uh, I didn't know it at first because I just that's the first I saw of any Agent Ica stuff when I first saw it. This is the first anime that I like got introduced to that. But later on, when I did, when I was doing more research back then, when I um, looked through like the list of anime to see what anime I would watch and all that, to see if it's all good to add to the list to watch again eventually. But um, yeah, when I when I was just going down the list more, I found the uh, that it was actually a sequel to the Agent Ica anime that I'm talking about right now, the English dub, so, and the, and the, um, and the prequel also has, uh, English dub as well, so, yeah, so anyway, so I want to talk about more of the, of that anime, Agent Ica, so, um, if you just really, um, take out the, the nudity and stuff, it's just really a cool anime, because the whole plot is, uh, of course, you got Agent Ica, and then you got, um, I forget her name, but she's like, orange hair, uh, kinda nerdy. I don't think, I think she's a, like, a little younger than Aika. But, um, anyway, so they're like pretty much, I guess, uh, agents? Agent partners? Well, well, the orange haired girl, she's not as, um, uh, skilled as Ika, but she, but, uh, she helps. I, my, her name, the orange haired girl, is like on the tip of my tongue. What is her name? It's like when I keep talking about her, she's just like wanting to say her name. I don't, I don't remember her name exactly. But anyway, so, I'll just continue, so. Anyway, so the orange haired girl's father is actually the the boss of the salvaging company there's like in this anime there's like other salvagers and um they they look for buyers to buy what they salvage from the oceans because um it seems like in that timeline uh, most of the most of the world was like flooded there's only mainly islands now and yeah it's kind of crazy but yeah, it seems like that's how that goes with that. But anyway, so pretty much with the um, when I was talking about the boss. So the boss is like I said, the orange-haired girl's father, and um, just knows Ika really well personally because they've been like she's been working with him for a long time. But anyway, when like they start talking and all that. And eventually, when, um, I think when it gets near to the end of that episode, it, like, it, like, talks about how she has this other, this special power, where if she, it's like a golden, uh, chest plate suit, it starts out, like, as a little red orb, and it's supposed to be, um, something that, like, military technology experimented on, like, I think 10 years ago in, in the anime, or somewhere around there, to where I think, yeah, where Aika was pretty young. Um, not like in her teen, uh, teenage years, but, uh, 
like, I don't know, probably like 18 or something, because I don't know exactly how old IK is in that anime. Just because, I, I don't know. But anyway, so, yeah, so they were like introducing that. It was so cool because, uh, because it's just awesome the like she transforms and all that because she's like she's like a white blonde girl normally but when she transforms she gets um uh, like really tan skin and she has like blue hair and she gets like increased fighting abilities it's so awesome and um what else um trying to think of the next things oh yeah well i, I guess i didn't introduce the guy um I was about to call him Guzma. No, his name's not Guzma. That's that's from Generation Seven, the Team Skull boss. Um, what's his name? I think his name is Augustus. Yeah, and he <laughs> he's a funny guy. He's always trying to get a date with Ika, and um, I'll try to do a voice impression of him. He he sounds like he kind of sounds like um, Ernie from Elmo. I don't know if I can do that voice. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do an impression. I don't hope I don't fail you all right here. Ika, yeah, he kind of sounds like that. He's <laughs> like Ika, Ika, kind of like that, but like more. Uh, the the voice is like way way better than I did there, but I did a decent job. Like you you know what I probably mean when I talk like that. Uh, how exactly he vo his voice should just sound, but um. Yeah, he's interesting, and then he has, like, a, a way older uh, partner that he does salvaging, because cause they aren't on the same company, uh, Augustus, and I forget her name. Her name is, like, on the tip of my tongue as well. Um, I think it starts with, like, a V? No, I don't know, but anyway, she's, like, a... She's a she, but she dresses and acts like a guy, so I guess she's like a tomboy. And, uh, yeah, she's pretty cool as well, because she can fly planes, and she's pretty much the brains of the duo of Augustus, but he's like the bronze, and sometimes smart, but most of the time pretty dumb, and, uh, <laughs> and um, pretty dumb, and, like, you know, the, you know the type where they're mostly all about, uh, mainly physical skill and just trying to get like the charmer you know right I'm sure you probably know what I mean but um yeah so anyway so pretty much after they get done with the whole salvaging argument because they because uh, Augustus he tried to steal uh, the I think it was like a no, it wasn't a suitcase. It was like a a very priceless artifact that Ika already found at the bottom of the ocean with the submarine she was in, and um, yeah, and then he and then he tried to steal it from her, and it was like got damaged, but she was able to get it back, but it got damaged, and the uh, orange hair girl was like all pissed off because the buyers were like saying they wouldn't they would pay like a quarter of their normal rate that they would go for for selling these price artifacts but anyway uh this will be the last one we'll check for the episode so unless um next episode i most likely will talk about my pokemon soul silver stuff that i did so anyway all right well if you enjoyed the episode and you would want to support me financially then if you'd be so kind as to donate to my Patreon, as long as you're not putting yourself in a bad spot by doing so, well, if you want to, the link is in the description down below, but I'll be seeing y'all later. I've been your host, Paul Samayoi, and goodbye.